let us remember and remember and reflect about the sacred heart of jesus i have already told you the sacred heart of jesus which was pierced from there the blood and water was oozing out it symbolizes the bleeding temple of jerusalem it is a very famous statement bleeding temple of jerusalem because on the day of passover thousands and thousands almost more than 200000 lamb of god lambs were sacrificed in jerusalem temple and from the side of the temple from through a tunnel this blood comes out you can see a picture this is only a, a imaginary picture of the jerusalem temple side there is a hole on the side of jerusalem temple and from there the blood and water comes out and it goes to the kedron valley kedron valley is very important valley because that is where the bodies were buried and a lot of tombs and all the people tombs were buried it is between the uh, the getsemani it's part of the getsemani uh, uh, the garden of getsemani also is part of the kedron valley and mount of olives and jerusalem temple between be, between the temple mount and mount of olives there is a valley and that valley is called kedron valley now if you visit the holy land you can see thousands of tombs thousands of people are buried in those place and it is to that place the blood from the jerusalem temple blood and water used to flow and it is very symbolic because we read in uh, uh, gospel of john chapter 19 verse 34 gospel of john chapter 19 verse 34 we read instead instead one of the soldiers one, one of the, the soldiers, soldiers pierced his side pierced his side, his side with a spear with a spear and at once and, and at once, once blood and water came out blood and water, water came, came out when jesus died on mount calvary a soldier came and pierced his side from there at once blood and water came out and then see, this is a very important statement why it is a very important statement because when you read the next sentence we know there is something special with this sentence because it is written in bracket he who saw this has testified so that you also may believe his testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth that means piercing the side of jesus and the blood and water that is coming out of the side of jesus is more than a miracle it is very significant it is unimaginably important for the jerusalem people jewish people that is why after that statement it is written this is testified is this is has to be believed this is a very important testimony it is true and he tells the truth all these things why this is this statement is so important because anyone if you know when you see just he said jesus is body is he is already dead and the soldier came and pierced his side and from there the blood and water gas came out why it is so important why this statement has to be mentioned because anyone who is on mount calvary can see these two things at simultaneously one is jerusalem temple from their side from the side of jerusalem temple blood and water is coming out the second is on mount calvary look at from the side of jesus blood and water comes out this connection is so important for jewish people because jesus told this when he was alive he told i am the new temple this temple will be destroyed but i will build this temple in 3 days destroy this and in 3 days i will raise it up and he was talking about his body it is written in the bible he was speaking of the temple of his body his body is the temple and from there from the side of the temple the blood and water is coming out on the same day when jesus died the passover was celebrated in jerusalem temple and blood was oozing out and we as that is why this celebration of sacred heart of jesus is very very important and this blood is going to the tombs of millions of people cleansing them from the death and this blood that is oozing out from mount calvary is coming to all of us who are dead and you are resurrected through jesus our sins are washed we were dead to the sin and now resurrected praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus and therefore there are so many things in the bible once we know this truth it is very important and we will be you know uh, we will be 
I am filled with the love of Jesus and love of the Lord, love of the church and love of the whole Eucharist because it's very important for us to study the Bible properly. Praise the Lord. Praise Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That is why if anyone has got a doubt, you can check in the uh, Google out and see and the bleeding temple of Jerusalem and then you will, the whole history you will come to know between uh, especially what happens on Passover day and the way the blood and water being oozed out from the side of Jerusalem temple. And it goes to the Kedron Valley and it goes to the place where all the dead people are buried of our families to the sacred heart of Jesus. And it's also very important to have a picture of sacred heart of Jesus be uh, exposed or kept in your home in, uh, with the utmost reverence and consecrate the whole family to the sacred heart of Jesus. And every family should have a sacred heart of Jesus picture where we should have a special devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we all know the divine mercy picture. From there, in the picture we can see, there is a, a blue light and red light flowing from the heart of Jesus, from the side of Jesus. It symbolizes the Eucharist and the sacraments, especially the baptism and the Eucharist. And... That symbolizes the sacraments that comes out of Jesus. And the church is born from the side of Jesus. And there is a historical reason. Historical reason why this side of Jesus is very important. Why this blood and water is coming from the side of Jesus. We all know Jesus himself said once, If you destroy this temple, I will build the uh, temple in three days. This temple will be destroyed, but I will build the temple in three days. And it is written, he was talking about his body. His body is, he himself is the new temple. In the history of Jewish culture, every Passover day, they used to sacrifice more than 200,000 200, lambs. 200,000 unblemished lambs used to be sacrificed on the day of Passover. And the whole temple of Jerusalem, especially where the, the courtyard, where the sacrifice of the animals are done, full of blood. And after that, after each sacrifice, they pour water and then clean the area. And therefore, the whole area of the Jerusalem temple, especially where the sacrifice of the animal takes place. There are two, three places in the holy temple. First one, holy of holies, then the holy place and the courtyard. And that is where the sacrifices of the lambs are taking place. And just imagine 200,000 animals are sacrificed on the same day at the same time and in the same place. And how much blood is going to come out. Most, many of the blood they collect it and they sprinkle it. And, and later, from the side of the Jerusalem temple, there is a, a, there is a tunnel, a hole through which all these blood and water used to flow out and from the side of the temple it is it is said it is side of the temple there is a pipe or there is a, a tunnel from through which the whole water and blood comes out and it is it is a it is a very important yes, a scene that people all see every passover day and the same way jesus when he died on mount calvary as soon as he died, we see the side of Jesus is pierced and from there blood and water is oozing out. And people remembered the Jerusalem temple and Jesus the new temple. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the side of Jesus, the blood and water is oozing out. And Jerusalem temple is the symbol of the whole Israel. Jesus, the new temple, is the symbol of the new Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And with these, the whole church is containing in Jesus Christ. And therefore, on this day, when we celebrate the feast of sacred heart of Jesus, let us remember that pierced heart of Jesus, from where the blood and water is oozing out. For you and for me, and we are all washed in the precious blood and water of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that is what we celebrate and pray together this divine mercy chaplet. Let's read this word of God. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 29. 
let this prayer be our prayer in every house and every family let us pray like this now now therefore therefore may it please you may it please to you to bless the house of your servant to, to bless, bless the, the house, house of, of your servant so that so that it may continue forever it may continue, continue forever before you before, before you. you for you o oh lord god for, for you o oh lord have god have spoken have spoken and with your blessing and with your, your blessing, blessing shall the blessing of your servant shall the, the blessing of your servant be blessed forever be blessed forever, be blessed forever. This is a very powerful word of God which you can pray in your home every day and it will help you to be blessed your house will be blessed now therefore now, now therefore may it please you may it please you to bless the house of your servant to bless the house of your servant so that so that it may continue forever before you it may continue forever before you for you o oh lord our god for you o oh lord god have spoken have spoken and with your blessing and, and with, with your blessing shall the house of your servant shall the house of your servant be blessed forever be blessed forever praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus god always blesses us but it is our duty to ask jesus to bless our home god always blessed david but it was the duty of david to ask god to bless him and god blessed him abundantly he asked god god let your blessing be there forever in my family in our house and god did it and always ask god to bless your home that is why we have consecration to the sacred heart of jesus of god book of daniel chapter 1 verse 9 daniel chapter 1 verse 9 let's read this word of god now god allowed daniel now god allowed, allowed daniel, daniel to receive favor to, to receive, receive favor and compassion and, and compassion, compassion from the palace master from, from the, the palace, palace master this sentence is very important sentence because there are so many secrets that he's revealed through this first thing daniel was in fact going against the will of the king daniel was one of the wise men of nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon uh, and and then but at the same time he he never defiled himself by the luxurious food that is provided in the kingdom in the king by the king he followed the bible the torah the moses the instructions very strictly and and god protected him he sacrificed all the worldly pleasures pleasures of the eyes pleasures of the body even though he was obedient to the king but he never compromised his faith and he did lot of sacrifice and then what happened now god allowed daniel to receive favor and compassion from the palace master the palace master could have been an enemy of daniel he could do lot of harm to daniel but because of the goodness and prayer life of daniel daniel received favor and compassion from the palace master because god permitted it so what does it mean that means even the attitude or behavior of people are under the control of god he, god can influence god can control god will do that praise the lord praise the lord and secondly if you are prayerful if you are holy if you are connected to god god will do many things in favor of you god will change the situations even the people even your enemies will be made friends with you Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because God has the power to do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. And remember Daniel and Israelites are slaves in Babylon. And the others are the masters and Daniel is the slave. Daniel is one of the slaves because Israelites are in slavery in Babylon. But though they were in slavery God still works. God still active. You know sometimes we are going through terrible crisis as if we are slaves. We are going through we are sometimes we are slaves of pain, slaves of sicknesses, slaves of financial problem, slaves of uh, uh, many other problems. But that is, doesn't mean that God has abandoned us. God will still work with us. God will still do something in our lives. That means even though when they they were they were left in babylon as slaves still god was doing something in favor of them in the midst of slavery 
and remember this slavery was a result of their own sins israelites committed terrible sins as a result the slavery happened but even in slavery god has not abandoned them god was individually working on them those who are committed to god god was allah god was with them though as a whole the all israelites left the presence of god because of their sin and as a result they became slaves but individually god was active in everyone's life praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus therefore one thing always remember maybe you are left in slavery of financial problem marital problem family problem sicknesses and many other things but still god will never abandon you personally whenever you are in need of him whenever you are connected to him whenever you are obedient to him god will work for you and everything will be made in favor of you and the compassion of god will flow to you there is no doubt about it my father would not have died and i would have taken because i am a nurse i know what happened to my father but all my family members in my absence they could not do anything and therefore as a result my father died if i was there this would not have happened so he is regretting all throughout his life for not being there next to his father when he was dying and he feels that it is his mistake and there are so many people who think there are certain things which happened in your life because of your mistake of course if you have done something wrong some evil some sins of course it will have some consequences but these are unnecessary thoughts these are completely unnecessary thoughts especially if someone dies it is not anybody responsible unless you kill them or, or uh, do some harm to them in any way but otherwise we don't need to focus on unnecessary thoughts in our about in our mind because there is a word of god acts of the apostle chapter 2 verse 23 acts of the apostle chapter 2 verse 23 we read like this praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord 22 onwards you that are israelites you who that are israel listen to what i have to say listen, listen to, to what i have to say jesus of nazareth jesus of nazareth a man attested to you by god a man attested to you with by god with deeds of power with the deeds of power wonders wonders and signs and signs that god did through him that god did through him among you among you as yourselves know as, as you yourself know. know and then was 23 this man this, this man, man handed over to you handed over, over to, to you according to the definite plan according, according to, to the, the definite, definite plan and for knowledge of god and for knowledge of god you crucified you crucified and killed and killed by the hands of those outside the law by the, the hands of those outside the law in this sentence two things you have to take very seriously according to the definite plan and for knowledge of god praise the lord praise the lord there is plan of god for knowledge of god god has already planned everything in such a way and also god is always aware of what is happening on this earth i have seen many people saying father before the death of my father my mother exactly the previous day my mother told me do this do this my mother all the debts she paid off and at the end that day my mother died see it looks like everything is arranged someone has planned and something happened according to the plan of someone i remember my uncle died recently when i had gone to india for goa retreat and mangalore retreat between these goa retreat and mangalore retreat there were three days three uh, three days a uh, free day my uncle died exactly on those three days between that three day uh, the free day so that i could go and and attend his funeral and pray for the whole family and whole for uh, the funeral service i could attend if it was any two days or one or two days before that day or even after that day i would i wouldn't be able to join for that because my uncle and me we were so close to each other we were we were i knew him from my uh, when I, i used to see him very often almost every month or every week so we were so close to each other so and god has planned everything in such a way that a person who is in uk happened to go to india for a retreat and between these two retreat exactly these three days 
and that is the day he died and so that i could participate all the programs all the funeral services everything and after that i had to go, I, i could go and attend the um, um, lead the service in mangalore so when my the my uncle's family my cousins and everyone they were all crying for the because of the death of my uncle and i told them this incident and said it looks it it is a clear sign god was in control and god planned everything in such a way that i could come and join and lead the funeral service because he loved me so much and otherwise if it was any other day i wouldn't be able to come and join and it was impossible for me to just to attend a funeral come going from uk so it is a clear sign god was in control and god is planning everything when i said this when i said this they were all satisfied consoled so it is very important that you be consoled and very important that you are aware that this is plan of god you know if you see any incident that happen you can see something supernatural in that even the death of your beloved one maybe young people in your family must have may have died and you are so worried and you are so feeling pity for them and you know sorrowful about them don't worry if you see the life history if you see something there will be something connected to supernatural there will be some hint that he or she may have given you that these are the last days of this man or woman something he may show you unknowingly that is a clear sign that god is aware of what is going to happen praise the lord praise the lord thank you jesus thank you jesus so that is why it is written the definite plan and for knowledge of god everything that happens he knows it he is in control he permits it he allows it that is why it happens you don't need to take any blame don't feel guilty don't feel okay if i was there this would not have happened i am the responsible person i am the person who uh, is uh, responsible for the death of that beloved one you don't ever think like this he knows everything no one can be dead without his permission no one can be uh, taken away from this world without he knowing 